uh, uh, new to you all because you are going through a pandemic of another coronal uh, coronavirus disease caused by new strain of coronavirus. The book says new, but actually it is pretty old now. Compared to COVID-19, it is ancient in a way. Okay, so this is coronavirus type 4 and also called as SARS-CoV. What is the present virus known as? Anybody? The present COVID-2. COVID-2, correct. So this is SARS-CoV that exists in bats and palm civets in southern China. So see, the origin is almost the same. And this was declared as a worldwide health threat once upon a time when you people were very small or perhaps some of you were not born, I am not sure. Spread rapidly to more than two dozen countries across the world, infecting 8,000 people and killing about 775 before it could be contained in 2004. They started in 2002 and 2002 end and it went on for a year. So we are still in the process of the new novel coronavirus that is uh, the SARS-CoV-2 as somebody rightly pointed out. And if you notice, it has, in, it has spread to more and more countries, not two dozen, but much more. And it has affected so many lakhs of people and killed also more than one lakh. This is the first new disease of the 21st century. In fact, the COVID virus or COVID-19 causing virus is the third. Which is the second? Anybody? Which is the second virus? Or the second disease which came? Again, due to a type of coronavirus, it was called as MERS or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Have you heard about MERS? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Why the muted response? Be loud. You can't see me. I can't see you. Oh, sorry. You can see me. I can't see you. Okay. So in November 2002, everything starts in November, December. Everything starts in China. In the Guangdong province of South China, there was an unusual outbreak of an unusual respiratory infection with many deaths. Something very similar to what we are facing 2019-20. The earliest case was traced to a health worker, unlike in COVID-19, it was traced to a health worker. Where did it, uh, who, who was the first? Anybody? Doctor. It was a woman that had a market, right? Okay. Rap spread to Hong Kong, Singapore, Vietnam, Taiwan, and as far as Canada. Why? Because a lot of Chinese in these countries, like Canada, and all over, and even the Europe. Therefore, it spread to Singapore, Vietnam, Chennai, Taiwan, and also spread to Ohio in Canada. The term SARS was coined in February 2003. Something like in the novel coronavirus, recently, we used to call it NGO and all those names until we came to a name of COVID 19 coined by the WHO, I think perhaps on 19th of February 2020. I'm not sure about the date. Dr. Carlo Albani identified this epidemic and carried out initial steps to prevent this epidemic. SARS global distribution, you can see, it spread to about 24 countries. I already named the countries to you, but you can make out the countries which are in dark red. Okay? The North Americas, the China, then you can see the uh, parts of, uh, you know, Russia and uh, Southeast Asia, they are more affected, whereas countries like India, Australia, Russia, the bulk of Russia and uh, 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 the south part of North America, some countries in South America, some, some countries in Africa, including South Africa, they are a little less affected. This is the doctor, Carlos Albani. He died during the SARS investigations. So these are actually health warriors or medical warriors. Even the Chinese doctor who was working and who first thought that there is something dangerous and new, he was also killed by the virus. This is the uh, SARS virus. You may have read about it in microbiology. I don't know. But all of them, the coronaviruses, they have a spike glycoprotein. 
there's a membrane glyco glycoprotein, there's a small envelope gly glycoprotein, and there's a nucleocapsid phosphoprotein, which is there, and these are having a core RNA. So please remember the SARS virus, something, something similar to the present one. The clinical symptoms are fevers, chills, malaise, dry cough, sore throat, sore throat, sorry, myalgia, headache, and running nose. Soon the patient develops viral pneumonia, acute respiratory distress, and of course, multi-organ failure. Please remember the, the, the presentation is almost the same across all coronaviruses, or you can say ILIs, influenza-like illnesses. Infected people become ill within a week of exposure. In the first week, non-specific symptoms of flu-like illness begin. This period is followed by a syndrome of atypical pneumonia, including dry cough, progressively, progressively worsening, shortness of breath, with poor oxygen perfusion. Please remember, the symptoms are almost the same in the case of COVID-19. Since these are non-specific symptoms and findings, the diagnosis of SARS is only considered if the individual also has a specific risk factor within 10 days prior to illness. If there are grounds of suspicion, respiratory secretions are sent for testing. In case of coronavirus, the present coronavirus also, we take throat swab. Okay, the incubation period, about two to seven days, based on single exposure cases or well-defined cases, commonly it is about three to five days. It's a little lesser than the present one. More than pattern of transmission, no evidence before onset of first symptoms. Whereas in case of novel coronavirus, they have said two days before the onset of symptoms, the person is infectious. So just imagine, I am going to get day after, but I don't know that I can transmit the disease to you today. So it's that dangerous. That's why we're so worried about the virus. A few cases thought to have transmitted in the early prodromal period, those who are very ill or experiencing rapid clinical deterioration, usually during the second week of illness, are the most communicable. No evidence of transmission, 10 days post-fever. If you can cure the fever, the sore throat, about 10 days after all this, patient is supposed to be not infectious anymore. In case of COVID-19, we are seeing cases of relapse. People who have been termed as COVID negative after treatment or hospitalization are coming back with the so-called relapse. This virus is dangerous. Roots of transmission, the primary mode, as I told you, dry mucous membrane, the eyes, the nose and the mouth. That's why they say, don't touch your eyes, nose, mouth, the face. Okay? And this comes in contact with infectious respiratory droplets or fomites. If I am not using my mask, okay, my droplets are coming on to you or on a surface. You are touching the surface and after that you are touching your face. So therefore, that's how the present virus also is getting transmitted. Events that promote aerosolization of infectious excretions, secretions, body fluids in hospitals or other settings may amplify transmission. Endotracheal intubation, that is our anesthetist friends, bronchoscopy done by the pulmonologists and nebulization treatment done in casualty or perhaps in the medical ward. Please remember when we do all this, we come in contact with the body fluids, secretions and excretions of the person. So it's not the same. If you've read about the present coronavirus, I'm sure SARS will be easy for you all. The role of FICO transmission remains doubtful. No reports on food and waterborne transmission. Cases occurred primarily in those close contact the very ill in households. Therefore, we have advised COVID or people who are caregivers, who are in family contacts, and includes people like doctors, nurses, in direct contact with the patient. No reports of transmission to and between children, which was a very healthy, you know, or which was a positive thing in case of SARS. There was no blood-borne blood transmission. The case definitions, 
as I was uh, telling a class the other day, or perhaps the interns, there are always two or three case definitions. Please remember, there's a suspect case, there's a confirmed case, and there is a probable case. Okay, a suspect case has high fever, come for breathing difficulty with following exposure during days prior to onset of symptoms. Close contact, history of travel, very, very important even in the present one, and residing in a SARS-affected area, something like people in Wuhan or something like people perhaps in Mumbai, where there are so many cases now. A person with unexplained acute respiratory infections resulting in death after 1st November 2002, on whom no autopsy was performed and with following exposure during a day's prior onset of symptoms. That is close contact and history of travel. Please remember, the only important thing is... will now be recorded. Contact. Okay, I was not recording mine. I don't know who's recording. So it is a history of travel to a SARS-affected area or resided, residing in a SARS-affected area along with close contact. The symptoms, as I told you, they are quite non-specific. Probable case, a suspect case with radiological evidence of infiltrate. So now you're going for an X-ray. Okay, so therefore a chest X-ray as well as those which have got positive assays and a suspect with autopsy finding consistent with the pathology of respiratory distress syndrome without an identifiable cause. So therefore a probable case is somewhere, some somebody in which you start investigations, right? And then you finally come to the case definition for notification. That is, you are now sure that this person is SARS and therefore you got to notify. This is as per the International Health Regulations 2005 because this is a disease which travels along with you. We, have, we should remember the word emporiatrics. An individual with lab confirmation of infection with SARS-CoV who either fulfills the clinical case definition or has worked in a lab handling live virus or storing clinical specimens infected with SARS-CoV. So please remember, this is the case definition of SARS. Clinical case definition, history of fever or documented fever and one or more lower respiratory tract infections like cough, breathing difficulty, shortness of breath and radiologic evidence of lung infiltrates consistent, consistent with pneumonia or ARDS and no alternating, no alternative diagnosis explaining the disease. So therefore, clinical case definition includes the symptoms, the history of travel, the radiologic evidence and of course, no other alternative diagnosis that you can explain the illness with. Diagnosis is conventional reverse transcriptase PCR, RT-PCR, something which we are often hearing in case of COVID and real-time reverse transcript, transcriptase PCR, okay, real-time RT-PCR. At least two different specimens, so same specimen collected in two or more occasions or new extract from original specimen, they are used. Please remember, if you know about SARS, you will know a lot about MERS and you will know a lot about COVID. So therefore, the symptoms, the kind of definitions, the, uh, the, the investigations, they're almost the same. Lastly, we come down to ELISA or immunofluorescent assays. Epidemiological aspects, healthcare workers involved in procedures generating aerosols are affected most, me, you, people who are in close contact, almost 21% of cases in cases of SARS. Maximum virus excretion from the respiratory tract occurs on about day 10 of the illness. Therefore, we are so vehement on using a mask. Efficiency of transmission appears to be greatest following exposure to severely ill patients or those experiencing rapid clinical deterioration, usually which happens in the second week of the illness. Children are rarely affected, I told you. International flights have been associated. You've seen the drastic, the drastic effects of this virus all the world over. The trains are not running, the flights are not there. So therefore, this one is far, far more potent and dangerous than SARS. 
international flights have been associated with the transmission of SARS because people travel and they also travel, they bring the virus to various places. Complications, as with viral pneumonia, pulmonary decompensation is the biggest threat. We have ARDS, we have intubation and mechanical ventilation is required in about 20 to 30 percent because they can't breathe. Infections and nosocomial infections are rife. Hospital acquired infections, tension pneumothorax after ventilation at high peak pressures and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Basically, all the complications are more on the in the respiratory system. Please remember that many people require ventilation, but this coronavirus, when it gets serious, almost all people will require ventilation. Patients with SARS often require oxygen therapy and severe cases require tracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation. I've already told you that severely ill patients will be admitted in the ICU. No medication, specific medication has been proven to treat SARS effectively. Medical caregivers need to follow strict policies on gloves, masks, gowns. What do we call them collectively now? All these things? Class? Yeah, very nice. Personal protective equipment. Something which we taught you only during hospital waste management perhaps. But now these words are so common. For all you know, you may get a short note on PPE. You may get a short note on lockdown. You never know. You may get a short note on social distancing. These are new words that we are learning. Along with you, even we are learning. We also didn't know these words. Well, certain drugs have been tried. Revivarin, lopinavir, ritonavir, interferon, IV, corticosteroids and immunoglobulins. But there is nothing specific for SARS as yet. There's no vaccine. Their efficacy remains inconclusive. In fact, ribavirin showed opposite outcomes in Toronto, that is Canada. Overall mortality was 14%, perhaps a little more than what this COVID is doing in general, except for countries like Italy and uh, uh, China initially. As persons age, mortality rate increases, nothing new. 50% in persons over 65. Chronic hepatitis B infection treated with lamivudine, high LDH concentration, it is concentration, that spelling is wrong, high neutrophil count, diabetes mellitus, all the comorbidities, especially in the elderly, add to, a, to your poor prognosis. This is what we are stressing in, SARS, uh, in, in, in COVID-19 also. Many subclinical cases have gone un undiagnosed and perhaps they have been carriers and spreaders of the disease. Prevention, I need not emphasize, all of you know more than me by now, prompt identification and restriction of their movements, admitting them, isolating them, quarantine, these, these words were almost forgotten. But now, as I told you, another new word is self-quarantine. Okay, so these, these may be asked in the exam. Effective isolation of SARS patients, appropriate protection of medical staff the, uh, who are treating these patients, this lady is wearing a mask like you and me. Comprehensive identification and isol isolation of specific SARS cases, simple hygiene measures like hand washing, use of appropriate well-fitted masks and infection control measures. Exit screening of international travelers. Well, they tried this with COVID and they have stopped it because it was beyond control. There is no travel now national or international. Timely and accurate reporting and sharing of information with higher authorities or governments. Some people say China had uh, hidden some information. Well, that is left to me and you to you know believe or not. But sharing of information is something which is very, very important. The SARS outbreak of 2002-2003 was controlled solely, if I may say, by the grace of God. But here the book says by using public health measures, such as wearing PPE and following simple hygienic procedures like hand washing. Please remember, we have gone through SARS a little quickly, perhaps because uh, the, the chapter is small, as well as this is not very important in COVID days. If, you, if at all you get something, you will get something on COVID, and maybe you will use your knowledge of SARS and write on them. Research on vaccine continues. 
we are a lack of the sickle people. There is no vaccine of SARS for SARS. There's no vaccine for MERS. Years have gone by after the disease has come and perhaps, you know, reached a plateau and even come down. But there's no vaccine. More research in examining the virus itself and its chemical pathways are required. Man is, is so weak in front of a small virus or maybe in, in, in front of nature and God. Well, please take care. That is all about SARS. And we will go to the next one, which is a more important topic called as ARI or acute respiratory infections. Had you had a normal, uh, you know, uh, college by now, we would have taught ARI also in the clinic.